If you want to go old school, analog, you need a sketchbook with some paper in it, some pens, some markers, eh, a ruler, eraser's good and handy. Oh, milk chocolate doesn't hurt either. And you get this really nice isometric cologne bottle. If you want to go digital, I use a Cintiq. I find it a vastly better experience than a tablet, as it's much more natural to draw this way. And you get this nice perspective carbonated soda bottle. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and then you hit the bell. Hit the bell again so you get the little parentheses around it. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. Let's do a little bit of rendering. We're gonna take a look at digital versus analog. There's pluses and minuses to each option. We'll start with the digital version and I think the front end setup is a little bit more intensive than versus, you know, analog. So here I sketch everything out uh, to get my shape and there's even some work done before this uh, just in terms of the design of the bottle. But just getting some decent line quality, uh, it's a little bit different than just drawing a line. Um, I need to come back and do a little bit of cleanup to get some decent uh, line quality, thickness, consistency throughout the entire uh, image. I split the drawing down the middle and clean up one side, that way I just can flip it over, which of course is a huge advantage versus drawing on a piece of paper. You would have had to do that with a photocopier or something. So let's take a look at how we start out a analog sketch here, and I'm trying to be fairly precise, so I actually measure things out, which I don't do a lot. <clears throat> but again, here I'm creating the profile, and I do this with a pencil. And I lay down the pencil really quick so that I can come back and erase it. Uh, because that's something you can do in digital, and uh, if I start in a marker or a pen, I can't really erase it so good. So I do that in pencil first. Now let's get back into digital, and the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up my masks. So for those of you guys who aren't real familiar with digital rendering, uh, I basically make an outline of my shape so I can work in a specific area uh, and that area alone. So there's again a little bit more cleanup work to do. I have these center line things that I got to clean up. I put in a tiny little bit of perspective uh, in this drawing. Uh, the digital version has some perspective. So there's a little curvature at the top and a little bit of curvature at the bottom versus the analog one, which is straight on isometric view. This one is uh, slightly curved. And you'll be able to see into the bottom of the bottle and just tiny, tiny little bit of the top. Uh, again, so I'm doing a little more cleanup so that I can make a nice selection of the areas so that I can render them correct. And this is the thing about digital for me that takes a little bit longer before you can render is the setup. but it gives you some advantages. So I set up a custom gradient here and I gradient this thing from top to bottom and then I start laying in some values. So the left side is a little bit darker. You can see where the shadow is already on the ground. And so I make that side of the bottle a little bit darker. There are some constants with glass uh, when you render them. The glass bottles have thickness, of course, and you show that a little bit uh, in real life. You don't always see this, it depends, um, but the renderings that we're doing in both cases are kind of simulating a studio setup or a studio environment with some lights. And you'll often try to highlight uh, that thickness of the glass because that's part of the design. So I do the bottom of the glass first, and then I come back in here and the bottom of the glass is slightly darker because it has a little bit of a liquid in it. And then I do the top, and that's gradiated from top to bottom as a little shadow that's cast from the cap. Again, I make the left side a little bit darker. So, and I do everything in gray because we can adjust the colors later. 
Now I'm coming in, I'm doing the cap, and the cap is a little bit more shiny metal plastic. On the analog side, with a regular sketch, I'm going to start out with a marker, and I'm using a 1% uh, gray here, Prismacolor, and glass, very much like uh, chrome, sort of has no sort of color of its own, but it has a lot of refractions and uh, reflections inside the glass. And so I start off with a number one uh, gray, and then I build up from there, 2%, 3%, to get my gradation. So I did that before on the glass digitally, and I need to do that in the analog way with different values of marker to build that up. So I just use a ruler here so I have a nice straight side, and I'm coming in with a uniball uh, pen. So this is uh, a ink that doesn't smudge from uh, or bleed from the marker. Now, one of the things about glass is that it's very contrasty, and that's what gives you that uh, glass look and feel. So we want to build up uh, that contrast, the black against the white. There obviously is some grady, gradient uh, in the gray, thus the marker, and that allows us to get that. The top is uh, also a metal removable top, so we're going to make that even more contrasty, uh, thus the gradation up there. Uh, again, we are rendering this as if it was in a photography studio, not the way it would be in the real world. So we are increasing this contrast, making things a little more punchy, and we're really controlling the reflections and uh, some of the refraction going on inside of the glass. So we're getting maximum contrast here. So I'm going to come back in. The beauty of the Uniball is that it doesn't bleed versus the Papermate um, pen that I normally sketch with so I can hit it with my marker and get my nice gradation. If we come back to the digital version, uh, the bottle is more or less done and I'm adding in the reflection on top of uh, the bottle. So in this case, the bottle has a curved surface where the uh, analog one is a flat surface. And so there's a little bit of a reflection that is shown in the outside surface of the glass. And this is where digital is really good for adding this type of stuff because you can do it in layers. If we did it in uh, analog, you have to come back with a white pencil or something like that. Now we add our color. And that's, of course, the beauty of the digital is you can add the color and make it any color you want. In markers, in the analog world, you are stuck with the colors that you choose. You can't really change them unless you pull it in digitally. So we're going to have a yellow liquid on the inside of this cologne bottle, kind of standard, very traditional. We're rendering a clear white glass, and here we're building up the value of that yellow uh, to show that. Again, we have a gradation, and we're doing that from right to left. There's a little bit of yellow that shows up in the glass, in the corners, and some of the different places. So we add that in there for a little bit of visual interest. The cap, uh, we add in some blue to suggest a sky, even though it's rendered inside of a studio. We add that blue because we all know that's what chrome has in it. Or oftentimes when we see that outdoors, we immediately know that that blue tells us it's a chrome finish. So now I'm using a paper mate, and this is the beautiful thing that I like about analog is it gives you that sort of fuzziness, kind of that grain feel from like film cameras or something. And that's often lost in the digital uh, stuff that we do. And I really like that sort of softness that you get. So once the sketch is done, I pull it into Photoshop. We adjust the level so we get white, white. And any little cleanups that we need to do where we've gone outside uh, the lines or gotten a little smudge or something, it's possible to do that here and clean it up digitally, which is really nice. So whether you're using just analog or just digital, that's really your preference, what you like. Both of them give you excellent results. Um, but they're going to give you a different look and a different feel. So it comes down to what's your style and what you really like. You may be asking yourself, you know, why choose one over the other? And how do you choose when you do a rendering, Eric? So for me, I choose often based on the time that I have to do a specific rendering for a project 
and potentially what level of detail that I'm trying to show or what type of a story I'm trying to tell. And that will determine many times what I use, analog or digital. Now let's take a look at the fun digital thing you can do. I'm just going to throw in some blueberries here and I can kind of add in these blueberries, something I couldn't really do in the analog version. I realize this is supposed to be a transparent bottle. I get that and I've made it so that you can't see the blueberries through that, but that's because I'm consciously trying to show the bottle itself. Um, and I realize that you'd be able to see through it. So I suggest you start with pen and paper. It's a lot cheaper. It's a lot faster to go through iterations and sketches to learn the basics that way. I realize that iPads are becoming a lot cheaper. The software is becoming a lot better. The hardware is starting to catch up and it's possible you may not need a Cintiq. I still find it vastly superior. However, it's a lot more expensive than a pen and paper. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can click on the little icon on the bottom right of the screen to do that. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Rock on. Click here to watch some of the other design and making videos that I have. If you'd like to have your music featured in one of my videos, drop me a line.